Today, I, I'm working on a special project where I'm making nine different plaques. But today's project is engraving these little brass plates. Now, I do not have a diamond drag knife. I'm going to use the CNC machine with a 20-degree engraving V-bit. Should be an interesting challenge to be able to engrave the message onto these brass plates. Here's a quick look at all the plaques that were finished with the little brass plates on there. Now this was a little bit of a challenge to be able to engrave the brass plates without having the diamond drag knife. But I'm going to show you how I did it today and show you the results on what I was able to accomplish. The machine that I'm going to use for this project is the Fox Alien XE Pro 8040. Now the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the waste board and I'm going to plane that surface. I want to use this surfacing bit to get it exactly 100% flat. To be able to hold this waste board down, I'm going to use the glue and the tape method, and I'm going to use the Starbond accelerator along with the medium Starbond uh, CA glue. I'm going to put two pieces of tape down to be able to secure this. We'll put one for that right there. And we'll put the other one right up here. And that will hold extremely well. Of course, we'll put another piece of tape right here. That'll match that one. And we'll put a piece right there. Then we'll take the... Then we'll take the medium... Starbond CA glue and just put just a little bit down. It doesn't take a whole lot to be able to hold this in place. I don't know if it was over there or not, but that'll be good. And then we'll take the accelerator and spray that. And again, it doesn't take a lot. From there, we'll flip this over and we'll position it right here. We'll push it down. We'll hold it there for just a few seconds, and that will be secured. Then I can put the CA glue away, accelerator away, and I'm going to surface this so it's totally flat. That way, when I take the brass plates and attach it to this newly surfaced area, it will sit perfectly flat, and it'll be registered to the spindle exactly. So it should give a nice, even engraving. When you do an engraving such as this, you're working with some very close tolerances. This material is actually extremely thin to begin with, and you only want to just touch the surface. Having a diamond drag knife actually would be better, but I don't have one. So I'm going to have to use a little 20 degree engraving V-bit to be able to do this. We're going to test this to see what the best depth is to get the best results on these little brass plates. But it's critical to be able to have the surface completely flat and perpendicular to the spindle itself. If not, that little variation would definitely cause a problem. Now I took a pencil and just scribbled across the surface. That way if there's any high spots left over and that pencil line still shows, that means we need to go down just a little bit deeper. But I'm planning to go down a sixteenth of an inch this wood is already relatively flat, so I think that is going to take care of it. And of course, with a sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to do this in one pass. Please don't skip this step. You may think when you assemble the machine that you did the tram and that the machine is perfectly flat and that the waste board, it has no variations in it. But trust me, I can pretty much guarantee you that there will be some very slight variations in that waste board. So no matter how well that you tram the machine, please do this step and surface a little scrap waste board that you can do so that you can put the brass plates directly onto this and know that it's perfectly flat for this small area. You can actually see some height variation in this board. Even though this was a relatively flat board, you can see the thick and thin places as it's doing the surfacing. 
So again, that emphasizes just how important it is to accomplish this step. Registration of the brass plate is critical. So I'm actually using the 20 degree V bit and I'm marking out on this flat surface the two inch by four inch rectangle to be able to provide the exact placement for this brass plate. So at this point, we mounted this auxiliary waste board. We surfaced this off so we know that it's perfectly flat. And now I put this little guideline on so that I can actually put these plates right exactly in the same place every time to be able to engrave them. So we're ready now to be able to engrave the first plate. And I'm gonna again use the glue and tape method. The glue, this tape on the back is gonna be specifically for securing it to the plaque itself. So I don't wanna damage this. I'm gonna put one piece down right in the center. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the brass plate. Put one piece right in the center. Look closely. See how that tape really doesn't want to stick well to that uh, backing? Keep that in mind. I'm going to go into that in more detail in a moment. Put just a little bit of glue. That should be plenty to hold it. Spray the accelerator and be able to hold it down in place for just a few seconds. Notice as I push down on this plate, how the reflection is changing. That's an important clue. So hang on, more about this in a second. And we're ready to be able to engrave. Okay, this will be the first test to be able to engrave the information on this plate. So let's run job. You can actually see the V-bit is actually already worn down some. I'm very pleased with how this is engraving. It looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm not sure if you can actually see the flex or not. I noticed in the camera it's very difficult to see how that brass plate is flexing. But it's actually giving and moving up and down as that bit comes down and touches the brass. Now this is engraving the brass plates in the background. So you can tell just how quiet it is. But one of the things that I noticed, these brass plates actually were stamped out. So the surface edge actually has a very, very slight round over. So as this is engraving in the center section, you can actually see a tiny, tiny bit of flex that's pushing down as the bit is engraving. So that's giving a very slight variance as compared to the outer edge, which is supported. So that gives you an idea of exactly how these plates were made in a stamped type operation where that little edge was rounded down ever so slightly. This is the second plate that I'm engraving. And you notice my hold down method has changed. I have tape on the surface now, taped to the edge of the brass plate to hold it in place. Well, doing these plates, I ran into another problem. The back of this plate, which actually has the adhesive on it to attach to the plaque itself, is extremely, extremely slick, and it actually feels like it's got a little film on it. Well, that little bit of film prevents the tape from sticking very well. So even using the glue and the tape method, it really is not holding the way that it should. So at this point, I went ahead and used the glue and tape method, but I also put an extra layer of tape on the top side. Using two different machines, I want to demonstrate how you can engrave brass plates such as this and get amazing results. Now on this CNC machine, I took a small block of the MDF and used the glue and the tape method to secure it. And then I flattened this surface again to get it completely 100% flat as compared to the CNC machine itself. This registration line is actually the size of the plate. And then the plate will just go right down on that point and give you the perfect registration. 
Now, because on this particular manufacturer of brass plate, this surface is so slick that the tape would not stick to it. The glue and the tape method would not work and this brass plate slipped around, moved and caused a problem. So the best solution was to actually tape it down on the surface and that worked extremely well. Because of that 3M uh, film that was on the back of those plates, the glue and tape method just did not work. So the solution, very simple, very straightforward, and here it is. And what I would do is stick a piece of tape on it, then I could line up the registration, get it exactly in place where I want it, and then stick that tape down. And put the tape on all four sides. And this proved to be the best method to be able to secure this brass plate. Only engraving down 33 thousandths of an inch. That seemed to be the sweet spot to get some fantastic results. And this is the type of results that I was getting using the 33 thousandths of an inch. The results, I think, are absolutely amazing. Considering the fact that the brass plate had flex in it and it varied with each brass plate that I did, and the bit itself would shrink very quickly as it engraved because that tip would wear down. But overall, I'm very, very pleased with the results and this is possible. And when you take a close look at these brass plates, it appears that they were machined to actually stamp them that cut it out because these edges are rolled over just ever so slightly. And what that means is on the back side, it creates a very slight pocket. That also makes being able to get this to engrave properly is a little bit of a challenge. But using the tape to be able to secure it on the surface did work real well. And again, I used 33 thousandths as the magic number to be able to get some really nice engraving. Now, it did take quite a bit of experimenting to be able to get to that point, but it was well worth it in the end. There's several very important factors that you need to consider if you want to do the engravings on brass plates. One, is that brass plate completely flat? Mine were not. Because of those rounded edges, it created the flex that was taking place. Remember that reflection that you saw as I was pushing it down? Well, that created quite a bit of flex and that allowed that bit to be somewhat flexible in relationship to the brass. And that's one of the things that actually helped. So even though I was using 33 thousandths of an inch, that gave you an indication of how much flex that was taking place with that brass plate. Those results were remarkable on the plate that I was using. But if you have a brass plate that is completely flat and you use the 33 thousandths, it's not gonna work. You're going to have to experiment with it. And there's another consideration too. The bits that I was using were a 20 degree V bit that was not designed for metal. You really need to have a diamond drag bit to make this work. I don't have one and I wasn't willing to spend about $170 to get one for a project that I was volunteering to do anyway. So the 20 degree V bit is what I use. There's a problem though. Those bits wear down extremely, extremely fast. In fact, I was changing the bits just about for every single brass plate that I was doing. As a result, as that bit wore down, of course, the thickness changed or the depth changed because you were not actually touching the brass plate as it was when you were z it to begin with. So that gave a little bit of extra tolerance. Now, that's another reason that it took a lot of experimentation to be able to get the right setting. And then their third consideration, being able to use the probe was almost impossible. It just did not work. It did not give me the accuracy that I needed. So I went back to the paper method to be able to set the Z height strictly manual and that too worked extremely well. So guys, it's all about experimenting and testing out different things to see what works and what doesn't work. Every situation is going to be different, and that's what makes woodworking and CNC machining so much fun. It keeps you young, guys. And at my age, I need all the youth that I can get. 
Well, I had fun showing you how to do the engraving today on the brass plates with the CNC machine. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, by all means, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.